In this video, we will show you how to scan and the sonoanatomy required to perform a supraclavicular brachial plexus block. This is an excellent block for surgery distal to the mid-humerus, and some even call it the spinal of the arm for the dense analgesia and anesthesia provided. Outlined here is the terminal sensory innervation of the upper limb. You can note that the median, ulna, radial and musculocutaneous nerves all have sensory contribution to the upper limb. This simplified schematic diagram of the brachial plexus highlights the area of the supraclavicular brachial plexus is blocked over the area of the divisions. To optimise positioning, turn the patient's head to the contralateral side, have them sitting upright and position the pillow ending at the side of the neck so there's plenty of space to scan and to needle. Once the probe is placed in the supraclavicular fossa behind the clavicle, this is the image that's generated. You can note the pulsatile subclavian artery lying on the first rib. Highlighted in this image here are the first rib, the pleura lying anteriorly, the muscles of sternocleidomastoid, omohyoid and the anterior scalene, and then the brachial plexus lying posterior and lateral to the subclavian artery. You note here that the brachial plexus is contained within a sheath and it has a posterior lateral extension. There is also part of the plexus located in the junction between the first rib and the subclavian artery. This is often termed the eight ball corner pocket area and it is essential for coverage of local anaesthetic in this area for a successful block. Failure to cover this area may result in ulna sparing. Here we are demonstrating the effect of probe tilting on the position of the subclavian artery in the plexus. Changing the tilt can alter the position such that the brachial plexus and the artery are lying on the pleura, a non-ideal place to block. Here we can clearly see the first rib with a bright white line and the acoustic dropout below it, with the pleura line to the left and right of the first rib. Scanning up and down the neck allows you to identify C5 coming from its transverse process and scanning further down one can identify C6 coming from its transverse process and scanning further down still C7. Note the absence of an anterior tubercle to the C7 transverse process revealing the vertebral artery medially. Here is a block being performed. As you can see, the needle is inserted in plane, coming from the lateral aspect of the screen. The aim is to deposit the local anaesthetic towards the eight ball corner pocket and gradually hydrotersect one's way through the plexus. When testing the block, if you ask the patient to lift the arm up, if the radial nerve has been infected, the arm will fall down, illustrated thus. You can also check the radial nerve by asking for elbow extension and the musculocutaneous nerve by elbow flexion. Here, the radial nerve is tested distally by looking at wrist extension and the ulnar nerve looking at abducting the fingers or crossing the fingers. To test median, ulnar and radial nerves at the same time, ask the patient to perform the OK sign with the wrist extended. Inability to do all components shows that the nerves have been blocked well. Here are some tips. Have yourself, the ultrasound machine and the needle insertion point in line to optimise ergonomics. Have the patient sitting upright with the head turned to the contralateral position. Move the pillow to optimise your space for needling. We advocate in-plane needling so that the needle tip should be visualised at all times. Position the subclavian artery and the plexus on the first rib and not the pleura. Don't forget to deposit local anaesthetic in the eight ball corner pocket. Always inject in small incremental doses with the least amount of pressure possible and aspirate before each injection. Apply the colour Doppler before scanning 
to identify the transverse cervical or the suprascapular artery which may traverse the plexus. <laughs>